split, they split it up into That's right. like three rooms, and they can, but they can open all up. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, and welcome to Selfish Town Council meeting of Monday, November 18th, 2019. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Councilor Adams. Present. Councilor Daniel. Present. Oops, I have an old sheet, sorry. Uh, I'll just go back around. Yeah, yeah just go by there. <laughs> Councilor Marchetti. Present. Councilor Adams. Still present. Councilor Catrona. <laughs> present. Councilor Daniel. Present. Councilor Steves. Present. Councilor Mana. She be delayed. Councilor Nash. Uh, absent. Councilor Lazo. Absent. And Council Jolivan is present. That's good. <laughs> there we go. At this time, just want to take a moment of silence in honor of Lieutenant Jason Menard of the Worcester Fire, Fire, uh, Fire Department. Lieutenant Menard died in the line of duty while saving members of his uh, unit as well as citizens. Our condolences from the town of Southbridge go out to him, his family, the city of Worcester, as well as the Worcester Fire Department. Tragically, they have lost nine members in the last 20 years, which is way uh, too many for a small city. Our thoughts and prayers are with them at this time. Thank you. Item three, consider and accept the town council minutes of Monday, November 4th, 2019. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Um, I, I had a couple of corrections that I already gave to Mary. Okay. Council Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, the only thing that I saw was um, under um, agenda item number seven and seven B, uh, Councilor Adams's enthusiasm. It should just be an S for the apostrophe at that. Okay. That's all I have. Any further corrections? All those in favor as amended? Opposed, unanimous vote, President. Subcommittee reports. General Government, Council Steve. <coughs> um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, we did have a recent meeting. Um, it was on November 13th. Um, several of the items are on tonight's agenda, numbers 12 through 16, um, 25, and 26. So I'll get to those when we get to them. Um, and that's, and I do not yet yeah, have one scheduled. Thank you. Department of Public Works, there was a meeting uh, last Thursday, I believe. Um, last week, anyway. Uh, Tuesday. Last Tuesday. Councilor Nash is not here to give his minutes. I was present at the meeting along with Council Katrona. We can speak to the agenda items uh, when they come up. Education and Human Services, Council Lazo is not present. Um, I know he had a meeting as well. There's a couple items on the agenda. Plan and Development, Council Adams. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you, uh, did not have a meeting from the last town council meeting. We do have one scheduled for tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. discussing liquor licenses, uh, recommending a, a, a citizen uh, for one of the boards and discussing um, redevelopment authority. And uh, we also have a curbside advisory committee scheduled for 26 November <coughs> at 3 o'clock in the veterans room. And I have a CMRPC meeting on the 22nd of November. That's all. Thank you. Protection of persons and property, council mayor is not present. There was no meeting uh, since the last meeting. Chairman's announcements. First, I'd like to uh, thank um, the cable access for keeping us informed. As many out in the community may know or not know, channel 194, the public access channel. There's an <coughs> issue with that. It has not been online. They are working with the charter communications to bring that to a resolution. It appears to be on the charter end um, so I know Jim and the cable office have been working hard in getting that resolved. Um, so we'll keep you informed on that. <clears throat> Received a email with an announcement, and uh, I'll pass this on from former Councilor Esteban Carrasco. Um, please join us for the eighth annual free Thanksgiving Day community mail. We held Thursday, November 28th, 2019, from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. 
It will be held at the Elm Street Congregational Church Reception Hall at 61 Elm Street in Southbridge. They will offer free mail deliveries. You can call 774-200-6095. The delivery time will be 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please join us for great food and great fellowship. This is sponsored by the House of Destinies Ministry Incorporated. So uh, thank you for that uh, organization putting out mails. I know they did it last year, maybe a couple years, uh, a few years. Uh, thank you for that support to the community. Um, with that, I have nothing further. Town Manager? Mr. Chairman, I have no announcements this evening. Thank you. <clears throat> Citizens Forum. Does any citizen wish to address <coughs> the council? There is no question. There are citizens. Forum. And just Council Dana did mention there is no yep. presentations of swearing in. Everything is through the citizens forum. So thank oh, you. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> That's why I was like, Yep, Whoa. I threw a curveball on that. So. <laughs> you did? Yes. Okay. Maureen Doyle, 771 Lebanon Hill Road. Um, I wanted to tell you all about this new booklet. Uh, from the University of Massachusetts and the University of Vermont called Forest Carbon. Um, it explains in easy to understand text and pictures how forests are a natural solution for the carbon increases of climate change that are affecting us now. Uh, we don't need a new technological fix to carbon storage and sequestration. We already have one in the form of our deciduous and coniferous trees that have helped us uh, worldwide for millions of years. In addition to maintaining temperatures, um, allowing ideal microclimates for vernal pools and wetlands within the forest, forested lands hold soil in place, filter water and stormwater, provide wildlife habitat and recreational opportunities like cross-country skiing and hiking, um, and provide sustainably harvested forest products. Uh, Multi-age forests are essential for our survival. Um, and now we have another reason to embrace our old friend, the forest, um, in our battle against rising carbon, their natural ability to store and sequester carbon. Um, page two of this book explains the difference between carbon storage and carbon sequestration. Um, and simply carbon sequestration is of younger trees um, when they photosynthesize and grow, um, and carbon storage is the older trees. That's one of the reasons why we need to keep older trees. And um, just uh, another little thing is page 12 talks about selling carbon credits. Um, <coughs> which uh, may be beneficial to somebody. Um, so I sent the link of this book to the counselors today, but I have a few paper copies here if anybody would prefer that. Um, it would be great if the link could be put on the town website for folks who are interested um, in, say, putting private land in Chapter 61, A or B, or in a federal program like APR. Um, but I do have some paper copies, if anybody is interested. Um, you can flag me down in the audience. Um, OK, thank you. Thank you, Maureen. <clears throat> Good evening. We're all a little nervous. <laughs> uh, my name is Wendy McFarland. I live at 94 Newell Ave. Uh, this is Donna Gendron. She lives at... 13 Ave. Thank you. <laughs> I am the Southbridge Pop Warner Cheer Coordinator this year. Donna is the head coach and these, Just you need uh, to speak in the mic because otherwise we can't hear you. So if you could just speak into the mic oh, a little sorry. bit. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, I'm the Southbridge Pop Warner Cheer Coordinator this year. I'm also a realtor here in town. And these are our Pop Warner Pee Wee Championship team. Yay. These girls have done an amazing job this year. They have came in second at regional, New England regional, and have now qualified to go to the national championship in Orlando, Florida. 
and we are overly proud of these girls. You will see them around town fundraising to get us there. It's not cheap to pay to get the girls and their coaching staff to um, Orlando for the national championships. So um, just for some of you who might be a little bit newer to Southbridge, Bob Warner has been in Southbridge for 50 years, football and cheer. Uh, it's one of the longest ongoing sports athletic organizations for children in this town. And we are all volunteers. None of us get paid. And what I can tell you um, from sleepless nights, worrying about the girls, the routines, do we have what we need, do we have enough money, do we have enough kids, uh, it's a lot of work. And one of the big things we strive is academics. All of these girls have to maintain their grades while they practice three to four nights a week, while they cheer on weekends at football games, home and away. We do travel, it's a traveling sport. And then we do competitions. So all of that, we have to do throw in a routine. So for them to come in second and qualify for national championships is huge. Not only that, it is the first time in 20 years that Southbridge is going to the national championships. That alone is huge. The uh, routine will be televised on ESPN on December 9th. So you will see us. I don't know if you can put us on the cable access. You will see the girls compete. And I just wanted to bring them to the town with their head coach, Donna, because they've worked very hard and they've gotten very little recognition. And I would really love to see the town embrace these girls and just get the word out that we're looking for fundraising to get them there. So if I really, real quick, we have over here. and Donna, um, and the other two coaches are hiding over there. Um, they have cheered for many years together, and they came this close last year to making it. Our Mighty Might team, we had 13 girls this year. Uh, they, were, they did really well. We had, half of them were brand new, so they didn't quite make it, but there's next year. So I would just love if you all would give them a round of applause and just wish them the very best for the national championships, because they're not nervous yet, but we're terrified. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much. Council Adams? Yeah, Wendy. Take do, you, do you guys have like a, a web page or, a, uh, or a, do you have a schedule where you're going to be fundraising at? Uh, we are going to be at Big Bunny on Saturday all day. Uh, both days? Saturday and Sunday? Both days, we're at Big Bunny. You'll see the girls out there uh, in their bows and probably winter gear um, raising funds. We have a teen dance night coming up on Friday night at the International Club. We, have, uh, we will also be at Walmart this weekend and Shaw's this weekend. Uh, we have been at the post office here in town, the various banks and Dunkin' Donuts, but because it's you know, the weekend before Thanksgiving, we're gonna try and concentrate on the three big grocery stores. So if you're out grocery shopping and buying your turkey, feel free to drop a five, 10 or you know, 20 is good. We're not you, <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> so um, it, is, it is expensive to go. We have to stay on property. Um, there are certain rules we have to do, unfortunately. We don't get to really shop around. Uh, and flying everybody down is not cheap at this time of year. So anything that we can get from the townspeople, just recognition is wonderful uh, because we don't get a lot of that. And we appreciate it and they appreciate it. They've worked really hard for this and they've changed their routine three times already. And they still did it. And so I am so proud of them. So thank you. Thank you. Any Council questions? Oh. Council Dan? Uh, back in the 90s, I was the camp manager and athletic trainer for UCA, the Universal Cheerleaders Association. So I just like to vouch for the fact that I understand and really want to vouch for the girls and the coaches for the work and effort that it takes to do what it is that they're doing and to accomplish what it is that they're accomplishing. Uh, the fact that you've changed the choreography and the routine three times to get it down right, to get the best one to bring forward to the judges, is quite the accomplishment. Yeah. So I, I really believe that we have quite a group of athletes here, and they definitely deserve the town's recognition, and I wish you all the best of luck in your coming Thank you. tournament. Thank you. Thank you. Well, on, on behalf of the town, uh, I am too proud of you. You represent the red and white very well. Um, I'm sure you're going to do fabulous down there, and I look forward to when you come back, having you back before the council as uh, champions or however far you go. But I'd like to have you come back before us, and you can even do a routine or something when you come back. Uh, and uh, we wish you the best of luck uh, in your endeavors, and uh, congratulations. They're a little shy tonight, because trust me, they're never this quiet, <laughs> ever. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you here tonight. Much. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Denise Clements, 128 Country Club Place, and that's a hard act to follow. Um, might I suggest that the town is a 5013C, and maybe there's some corporate sponsors out there, some businesses who might see fit to send a check to the town of Southbridge earmarked for the cheerleading uh, trip that is needing to take place. Just my recommendation, raising funds. Okay, I'll move on to why I'm here this evening. Southbridge Holiday Visions. The event is quickly approaching. It is Saturday, November 30th, and I won't spend a lot of time on that because we're gonna have a little bit of a video this evening that will um, show you some hard work that was done by cable. What I'm really here um, right now, usually I wait till the end, and after this is all said and done, we do a lot of thank yous. But this year, we struggled a bit to get workers, and um, this past weekend, you might have noticed, there's a lot that went on. And I can't thank enough the few people that I'm gonna mention tonight who spent um, most of them spent both days from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday and Sunday making our town very festive for the holiday season. Um, especially Dan Grabowski, Scott Benoit, Becky and Aiden Hulick, along with some little elves. Um, we had Pat and Kelly Spinelli who have been with us for 11 years. Councillor Joe Catrona, thank you for driving the truck. Appreciate that as well as all your heavy lifting. Um, Councillor Monique Manna came in for a couple of half days with us. Pete Knoyer from the Big Bunny Market and his truck. We also had Beth Stevens and her son Josh, and Helen Boyle and her son Josh. And I point out that uh, Sheila Jalbert came from the school with a student from the Rotary International Program and the student's parents. Unfortunately, they were at the Common helping us unload, and I didn't get their names, but thank you very much for braving the cold Saturday morning and working with us. Um, you know, again, it's just, uh, it's kind of a work of, which is a little passion we've got going on here in the last 11 years to try to get the town in a very festive spirit. And I think this year you're going to really see some great things. So um, yeah, I would not, cannot stop by not, without saying thank you so much to Subway, to Nell, uh, uh, Patel and his family for helping with uh, feeding the people and supplying some sandwiches, as well as Steve's Collision. Brenda, thank you for the um, truck that you led and test this weekend, along with the Big Bunny truck. It came in really handy. Um, so again, thanks to those people who helped. And I don't have to say a whole lot about this tonight because Bill May from Cable joined me last week and he said he wanted to do a promotional video. And let me tell you, um, amazing what, Joe put, uh, what Bill put together. I can't thank him enough for coming to the warehouse, spending his Thursday evening, um, asking lots of questions and putting together what you're gonna see tonight. It's just a couple of minutes and it's on Facebook. It's on YouTube, it's out there, it's being spread. Please spread it some more, and please join us on November 30th. Thank you for your time, Council, and your support. And um, if anybody is out there would like posters, flyers, or cute little cards for your businesses to hand out to people, we have everything. You can go to the Southbridge Holiday Visions Facebook and find out how to get in touch with us, or call me directly if you've got my number. Be happy to help you. Um, I would also like to point out one last thing, a big special thank you to the Southbridge Cultural Council, um, a local agency sponsored by the Massachusetts Cultural Council, a state agency, for once again supporting the Santa Visit, our Zepp Llamas, and a portion of the money uh, to pay the DJ. So they've been very supportive in the last three years, and I want to point that out, um, that we greatly appreciate their help. So we hope to see you all there on the 30th. Thank you. Hello from Southbridge Holiday Visions. It's just around the corner. Soon you'll be seeing all the wonderful glittering elves and snowmen and Santa Claus and all those great decorations that our volunteer elves have been working on. We are so excited to bring you this year's Holiday Vision and we hope that all of you will join us on Saturday, November 30th as we have our Santa Parade down Main Street to our wonderful town common where we will light the annual Christmas tree. The children especially enjoy all the big trucks from the DPW and the fire engines and the police cars along with the decorated floats. And there's nothing better than the looks on the children's faces when Santa's sleigh rounds the corner. The parade kicks off at 4 p.m. sharp in front of the fire station. 
will go from Elm Street to Main. Floats of all different sizes and shapes, whether you're the pickup truck with a few lights or a full-blown trailer loaded with a living nativity scene. That evening, you will all have a chance to have a picture with Santa, create some Christmas ornaments, see the wondrous lights in the trees, enjoy a cup of hot cocoa, a cookie, a fresh cup of coffee, play some games, and listen to wonderful songs at the gazebo. We will have the high school jazz band and the chorus performing for us, as well as holiday tunes by our favorite Ace of Spades GJ. Santa pictures will be from 5.30 to 7.30 by Village Photo. Purchase some kettle corn, hot dogs, fried dough, while you go and have a chance to pet the llamas, generously donated by the Southbridge Cultural Council. We will also be a Toys for Tots drop-off location. If you would like to participate in the parade, go to our Facebook page, Southbridge Holiday Visions. Get all the information. You can also email us at southbridgeholidayvisions at yahoo.com with your questions and we'll be sure to get back to you. Gather your family and friends and attend Southbridge Holiday Visions. Southbridge Holiday Visions, an annual event not to be missed. Make it a part of your holiday tradition. Thank you, uh, Denise, and thank you for working on that program. I know uh, over the years it's grown tremendously. I know I mentioned it last year after the event that it, it was such a fabulous evening for the community, all the groups that were brought together. Um, it's just another um, event, a long list of things that have changed in the town and really have brought the community together um, that are the positive things that we don't celebrate enough and something that we should celebrate more of. So thank you on behalf of the council. Uh, for all the hard work that you put into it, because I know it's a passion of yours, um, and uh, thank you for that. And I, I, I did forget, uh, and it was mentioned in this video, and I'd just like to announce it, I know it's <coughs> Citizens Forum, but uh, on the toy drive, um, that is the uh, Lions Club and Cops and Kids toy drive. Um, it is important to, to announce it now, because time is of the essence, and our next meeting will be December 2nd. So a couple of the things there. Um, this was really a passion of Steve Ide, of the Lions Club that's put it together. Unfortunately, Steve is very ill, um, and this is a tradition that the Lions Club is really trying to make a huge event this year to help out all the children in the area. Um, so it is a toy drive, and the uh, flyers, there's gonna be flyers throughout, but it really is. Please help us bring Christmas to deserving children in our area by donating new, unwrapped, nonviolent toys by December 20th. There's gonna be a Stuff a Cruiser uh, event on uh, 11, uh, two stuff for cruise events, one on November 29th between 6 and 8 p.m. at the Sturbridge Tree Lighting on Sturbridge, Sturbridge Town Common. We really like to thank Sturbridge for getting involved in this as well. They've been a, good par a great partner. Uh, on November 30th will be the Sturbridge Tree Lighting Holiday Visions with the Santa Parade between 5 and 7.30 and also um, a stuff for cruiser there. It'd be great to have as much as we, we can get. The 2019 collection dates are November 1st through December 20th. And again, all toys will benefit local families. Um, drop off locations, there's several of them. Avellino, Big Bunny Market, Cedar Street Cafe, Cedar Street Grill, Harrington Hospital, Jacob Edwards Library, McNuck's Marketplace, Southbridge Credit Union, all branches, the Southbridge Fire Department, the Southbridge Common, the Southbridge Police Department, the Southbridge Town Hall, the Sturbridge Police Department, as well as the Duck and Sturbridge. There is an application process, um, and that is out on the Facebook page and throughout the community. So um, there's a lot of kids out there that unfortunately are in tough, tough need. It's a little bit to give back. So another thing uh, in this community. So thank you on that. Are there any other citizens that wish to address the council? Anyone else? Seeing none, move on to item nine. Vote to confirm the reappointment of Heather Blakely as the DPW Director, effective December 1st, 2019, through November 30th, 2022. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Mr. Town Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a reappointment of our DPW Director, uh, Heather Blakely. I think all of our uh, town councilors have worked with Heather on a variety of projects over the last couple of years. Uh, that job is tremendous responsibilities, and not only are you overseeing the regular DPW department, the streets and highways and parks and recreation, 
but also has a major responsibility, responsibility as it relates to both the water uh, company and the sewer company. And, and as all of you know, we've had a tremendous amount of projects over the last number of years with regard to the sewer treatment per, uh, plant, and she's done a phenomenal job in, in uh, the beginning of completely, I guess in some ways, overhauling that whole plant uh, one after another because it's very, very old. Uh, I've had an opportunity to work with her the last few years. Uh, she always comes extraordinarily prepared to meetings, answers all the questions of town councilors, which are often very difficult, but has very precise technical knowledge on a lot of different subject areas that we deal with. So I'm recommending her for a three-year appointment. Uh, I think she's a tremendous asset to the town, and I think she will continue to be over the next three years. Thank you. Council Marquette. Uh, the co I sent an email to the to town manager to ask to see what Heather's contract was. And you answered that there is no contract for Heather. No, oh, go ahead. Through you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, there's very few positions in towns that have contracts. Uh, myself, the uh, school receiver or superintendent of schools can have a contract, and the police chief can have a contract, and the uh, finance director can have a contract. Other than that, all other employees are regular employees and don't serve under a specific contract. Okay, but when you appoint somebody to a position, that really is a contract. You want to call it a contract. It is a contract. Any minutes of appoint, appointment is the same as a contract. And I would like to see something about what her, her, her uh, the terms of her appointment are. I mean, if it's not a contract, then why would you even have dates yeah. like this? I, I would just like to see something before I, I would vote on something. I would like to see the terms of her appointment. That's all. Mr. Thank Tommy. you. Yeah. So, so through you, Mr. Chairman. The state only allows, under state law, only allows for specific positions in local government to have contracts. So even if I wanted to give the DPW a director a contract or other departments, I would not be allowed to. They work under the same working conditions as everybody else. They have the same health care benefits as everybody else, uh, the same wages, the same class of, we have, like, classifications for different positions. So there's sort of terms and conditions of any employee who works for the town, but they're not allowed to have this specific contract. Uh, like those few positions that I named. And also, uh, Council Marchetti, there are, is a, we do have a job description approved by the council that would outline his, uh, the positions, duties, functions, essential functions of the job, uh, and the like. Salary is also part of the council's purview uh, when we approve the budget. So outside of those few things, I'm not sure what else a contract um, I do know, like the town manager said, police chief can have a contract. A fire chief can have a contract as well. A fire chief does not, but uh, a fire chief does have the right to have a contract under 108.0 uh, of the uh, Mass General Laws. Um, so there is very few positions. So um, that's all I have. <laughs> Any further discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstain. Saying Council Marquette Exchange, motion carries. Congratulations, Heather. Look forward to working with you another three years. A lot of work ahead. <laughs> I do want to say, in regards to working with Heather the, over the last year and a half that I've been here, um, she's been uh, great to work with and uh, to, to uh, give us feedback, and uh, it's been very receptive to some of the initiatives that we have and uh, as a council because we've been pushing pretty hard for roads and, and other things. So thank you for that. And be a lot more on the plate that we'll push this year. Item 10, vote to accept the fiscal year 2020 Cultural Council grant from the Massachusetts Cultural Council to the Southbridge Local Cultural Council account in the amount of 16,800 for the dates of service July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion? Councilor Adams? For, for okay. the, thank you, Mr. Chair, before the town manager speaks. Um, this is voted on 4-0 at the AHS uh, subcommittee meeting. The $16,800 was the largest amount that they had ever received, the Cultural Council. Uh, they, they have uh, worked with multiple um, organizations within the town itself to, to help out, including a lot with the library. Um, and from that point, it was a great brief from the, uh, I believe it's the, uh, the treasurer and the president of the Cultural Council. And that, that passed on to the town manager. Thank you. Mr. Town manager? That's good. That's no, good. I'm all set. Councilor Adams did a great job. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous vote present. Item 11, vote to accept the master agreement with the Mass Department of Environmental Protection 
for recycle and dividends program grant in the amount of 7,700 to be used to support recycling programs. Is there a motion? So Second. Discussion? Council Adams? The, uh, the, the EHS subcommittee meeting as well. 4-0 and Adams, uh, all present. Uh, I know Andy's probably here and along with the town manager to give this a quick brief, but this is a caveat off the uh, recycling I IQ kit grant. It's not the IQ, say that fast, IQ kit grant itself but other funds um, and uh, to, to help uh, with the transportation purchase of reusable grocery bags, which I'm sure Andy will, will pass along to us. Um, the information, the $6,200 is for uh, um, staffing as far as utilizing uh, one person. I believe it's one person for right now to, uh, to help that out. But um, that, off the top of my head, that's what I remember of the meeting. So, okay. Andy, do you have anything else to add? You good? I believe Mr. Mr. Adams pretty much summed it up. If there's any further questions, though, I'm available. Any further discussion? Thank you, Council Adams, for filling in and providing that information. I appreciate it. All those in favor? Opposed? You know, all present. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Item 12, vote to approve a transfer of $20,000 from police salaries number 001210-511000 to a special appropriation account for the town manager search. So moved. Second. Discussion? Council Steves. Um, that was up at the last GenGov meeting. Um, it was approved unanimously. Um, and just a quick summary is that the, the, old, the whole plan for this one is just simply to start to kickstart the uh, um, town manager search process, possibly allowing us to hire a consultant if we decide to do so, to advertise and all that kind of stuff. So, Thank you. Council Marchetti. And as I said at the subcommittee meeting, I think this is way too much money for that type of thing. So I'll be voting no. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is an amount by charter we have to uh, provide funds to uh, that committee once it's appointed. Uh, the amount of $20,000 is a placeholder. I'm sure uh, we have to go out for a request for proposal uh, qualifications. Um, they would then submit a proposal to us. I would hope that if it does, I'm sure it may come in uh, lower, but this just gives them an amount to spend. Uh, there has been, uh, you know, I've gone and done research on some of the firms that I've seen. It could go anywhere from 7000 to 14000 It depends on uh, the scope of services that we want to uh, utilize by whatever consultant we do. Uh, in regards to the funding from the police salaries, we are not keeping the police department uh, short in any way, um, just for the, for the public. Um, two things, the police department does not have extra money. The chief wanted me to make sure I, I said that. There is no extra money there. It's just the fact that when we did our budgeting for this fiscal year through no fault of the police department or the police chief, there are four positions funded in the police budget. Unfortunately, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is very um, short on training for police officers in the Commonwealth. There was a big uh, article today or, or uh, story um, on uh, one of the news outlets today about police training in Massachusetts. Uh, to, in order to get an academy, sometimes you have to wait six to seven months. Um, it was our hope to get these positions into the pipeline in September based on an academy and civil service hiring. That didn't play, play, take place. So therefore, um, there's uh, some funds available to make this uh, uh, transfer and not hurt the police department. Any further discussion? All those in oh, Council no, just, Steve? just a quick comment. I, I would like to say just to, to Councilor McKitty that I certainly would hope that this project would not cost anywhere close to 20, 20 grand. Yeah. I and mean, personally, I think we can also certainly, just once the committee gets formed, they can certainly decide whether or not they even want to do a consultant or right. they can do it themselves. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. So, right. yeah. And this is just to be proactive and have yeah. a, a, right. a funding in place for have some money. Yeah. Any further? All those in favor? Opposed? 5 1, motion carries. Vote to appropriate $150,000 to the OPEP <laughs> trust fund with $71,000 to be funded from the solar lease revenues and $79,000 to be transferred from the landfill royalty account number 67900. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Councilor Steves? Um, yes, that was at the last GenGov meeting too. We actually voted a negative recommendation on that one. Um, and I know that's kind of unusual for a lot in a lot of cases, but it was because there was a lot of discussion about um, using the funds and the fact that Primarily, Scott and I, 
um, we're concerned about taking the money and when we have so many other needs going on now, especially roads and other, other infrastructure needs, and putting it into a funding that is for, for funding going long term that is something that we are already essentially paying on an annual basis now. We're putting this money, oh, hey, Monique. Uh, we're putting this money um, aside to pay these retiree benefits now every year, and we have been for a very long time. Um, and it, we're not, nobody's getting left out. All the retirees are getting the stuff that they need. And quite frankly, from my point of view, I, I can see this as just being a more of, a, of an actuarial um, scam, to be honest with you. Um, it may be legal, and I understand that the state law has, is certainly encouraging our communities to do it. I understand that. But we have such big needs for a whole bunch of other things in the short term and stuff that will affect the community directly that people use on a daily basis, like roads and so forth, that, that, we, we, that the committee was un, of the impression, the majority of the committee was on the impression that we need this money for other things. So that's why, we, we, that's why we shot it down. Go. Mr. Town Manager first, and then Council Adams, Council Mark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to uh, ask that the Council support this in spite of the negative recommendation of the subcommittee. Uh, just so the public understands and everybody understands, uh, when employees retire from the town of Southbridge, uh, the town picks up 50% of the cost of their insurance when they retire. That's their health insurance. It's extremely important that we fund this uh, because contractually we're obligated to. We've had union contracts in position for many, many years. Town Council voted on those contracts, and they have an obligation to appropriately fund uh, those items that they had and voted on in the contract. Uh, the state of Massachusetts looks upon this uh, as being sound fiscal practice. Uh, it is responsible to fund obligations that you've made, and that's what the state is looking at us to do. It's extremely important, though, because it could have an impact on our bond rating. When the town of Southbridge goes out to borrow money, one thing uh, involved is having a bond rating so you get the best interest rate possible on your borrowing. Uh, financial houses, uh, Moody's and uh, others will look at this in a real negative light. The town in the past has been contributing $250,000 a year towards this. We're only doing $150,000 with hopes to increase that to $250,000 next year when the additional solar taxes come in. Uh, the state, uh, if, as you recall, forced municipalities all throughout the state to fund pension plans because towns would not appropriately fund their pension plans. And for that reason, the state stepped in and said you had to do it because it's fiscally responsible. Uh, they have not done that yet when it comes to OPEB benefits, but they're going to. We have, I believe, over a $40 million liability here. We can no longer wait uh, to, to fund this account. Uh, we need to... Uh, pass this 150 and, and look to increase this in the future. It's the responsible thing to do. Uh, and, and frankly, again, the potential of this costing us money in the future if we lower our bond rate uh, could be higher than the cost of funding this. Uh, it is ridiculous uh, from the aspect of, of financial auditors, uh, from the aspect of the state, uh, from the bond companies would look at us very unfavorable if we didn't move forward on this. So uh, I think this is an area where I guess we don't have to, but for so many reasons, we must and should uh, move this forward in a positive way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Adams. Mr. Chair, thank you. I want to pass it on to Councilor Marchetti since he was there for the entire meeting. Um, and then maybe if there's anything else left to say for me, then I will. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Councilor Marchetti. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to fully support uh, paying into OPEB. And the reasons that I have is um, when I was at the meeting, I heard Councilor uh, the chairman, Councilor Steve, say that something about not wanting to pay into a, a system that he wasn't even sure people were going to live long enough to collect. And I was taken aback by that, but then when I started to do a little research into it, I found that that is actually how they do pensions. They, they make assumptions on how long people are going to live. They use a whole science, actuarial science, to decide uh, how to govern their, their uh, pension and uh, these funds collected are for everyone, and the assumptions are made on how many will live to collect. It's not collected for individuals, such as a 401k. Now, using the money, as Councilor, Councilor Lazo, I think, was the one who brought up using the money for something else, it seems to me that uh, using the money for something else, such as fixing the roads, 
That's probably what got public employee pension funds into, pro into such bad shape to begin with, because someone's always wanting to use the money for something else. And uh, retirement, uh, retirement benefits for public employees, uh, as I did more of my research here, are actual contractual rights. Mm -hmm. Years ago, the Supreme Court ruled that benefits are delayed compensation promised to employees when they are hired, hence it's a contract. And uh, actually, even the Constitution has a provision concerning contractual rights. Uh, and if you look in tonight's uh, agenda for personnel rules and regulations, you'll see there's a part in there that says town employees must contribute to the Southbridge retirement. Mm -hmm. So as far as I'm concerned, the town of Southbridge made a promise to its employees when they are hired that they would receive a pension benefit when they retire. And this is one counselor who will not vote to break or delay that promise to town employees. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Adams, did you have one? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, not much else to say here, but I, I will say is uh, I, I, I'll be supporting this motion tonight, um, even if we gave uh, the DPW director $150,000 tomorrow, um, that's not going to cut the mustard at this point in time because of the personnel issues that, that are all going, ongoing on over there. Um, I have nothing else to say. I'll be supporting this. Thank you. Council Steves? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I completely understand and completely agree with the importance of making sure that we, that, that we pay for our retirees, okay? But we, the point, my point is that we are doing that in the budget every year anyway. This is money that is actually not going directly to them. It's going into a fund for the long term, which I do believe very much in, in taking care of long-term issues. But one of the long-term issues that we are in a community in the, in the crisis that we're in now is that we really need, res we really need resources for infrastructure. Um, the, the retirees use that infrastructure just like the rest of us do. Um, and they are, as I said, in our budget, if you, look, if you look back at our budget funds, we put a large sum of money into retirement benefits every year already anyway. This is something that they're not pulling out of directly. This is something that 150 grand does not actually pay much in the way of retirement benefits as we're paying them now. Um, but it would help, I think it would help, as, as Heather has said in the past, um, it would help any money we can kick toward our infrastructure and our roads will make a difference. And that's, that's just my point. That's why I, I, I have always had an issue with OPEB. I, this is not the first year this has come up that I've, it may be the first year I've been this, this vocal about it, but I've always had an issue with it because it doesn't seem to me, to me that with the, the, the funding that we, we give, we put into the OPEB system and the numbers that they come up with this 40 million, 50 million, it seems to change every year how much we supposedly are in the hawk for. Um, and it just seems like, it just seems like they're just, to me, it just feels like you're, it's a shell game. That's just what it feels like to me. I understand the arguments. I completely do. And I do completely support the, the right of our retirees to get what we promised them. I completely agree with that, too. I just have a problem with the way OPEB is structured. Council Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, I agree with most of what um, Councilor Steeves just said. And just um, on a note that this, um, this unfunded mandate is something fairly new to us. So it, yeah, it, it, it hasn't been around for like 30 or 50 years. It's, it's the unfunded mandate to fund um, future benefits is fairly new to the state of Massachusetts. Um, I believe that this money should be going, I know there was discussion on this and everything, but I, I still believe that this money here, um, our infrastructure is falling apart. It really is falling apart. And I don't think we are at a critical state where we are going to lose our rating if we do not fund this this year, or maybe even next year. I think if we ignore it, then we'll be in that state, but we haven't ignored it. We're one of the few towns that have went head on and started funding it right away when we had the money from the landfill royalty. And if I may, um, Mr. Chair, through you to the town manager, how much money is left in the landfill royalty account? Right now, there's approximately between three and four million dollars in the landfill royalty account, which as you know, is being held in for potential lawsuits that, are, uh, that the town is involved with revolving around the landfill. Okay. So I don't believe that the three to four million dollars, all of it is being held. I believe there's a portion of that. 
But I, I think that we could actually take $150,000 out of the landfill royalty account and put it towards this. It could still be funded. That's my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Well, Ms. Clements, if you may. And Thank you, Mr. Chair. Denise Clements, 128 Country Club Place. Um, as a member of the General Government Subcommittee, I was the only one who voted to fund this having sat on council for nine years, as you realize, um, and watching what uh, previous town manager, Mr. Clark, um, put into place. Yes, an unfunded mandate by the state, but it's like our regular social security system, which everyone says is going to go bankrupt at some time. You can't just keep kicking the can down the road. And from um, all the years of trying to be ahead of the curve, our auditors have directly noted in our audits over the years that because we had a plan in place that put us a leg up in terms of our ratings, I would hate to see the town, as has been said, go backwards in that respect because it will cost us more in the end. You mentioned the infrastructure and all the needs that we have. Well, in order to pay for money of those needs, we will have to borrow money. And if our rates are higher, it's going to cost a lot more. So ultimately, the $150,000, while it sounds like a large number, it's it's a security net, it's our safety net. And we have done something, as Councilor Mana pointed out, we have a plan in place that, yes, other communities in Massachusetts still don't, but it's not something we, we have an option to do. It is mandated by the state. And at some point, they will come down on all the communities. And as we have heard at MMA year after year, a lot of them just don't have a plan. So Southbridge has done something unique in having a plan. And now it will come from some other revenue source, luckily not taxes, but it should continue forward, and I encourage and urge the councillors to vote to continue this because it's just one of, those, it's one of those necessary items that has to be dealt with. You can't just pretend it doesn't exist. It does. And um, I think it would be doing a detriment to our community if we do not continue with something that's been put in place now for the last 11 years, basically, that I've been aware with. Um, I just think it's prudent financial business, and the town should to continue. Thank you, Mr. Marchetti, for your research on that. That was very insightful. Thank you. Councilor Steves. Oh, thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, I do not, I'm not at all saying that we are being irresponsible about this. I think that this is an issue for me um, where, if you think about it, to, to kind of dovetail on what Councilor Manna said a few, a few minutes ago, um, <coughs> if we look at the, the, the long-term issues of these, of these OPEB benefits, and we compare them to what, what happens if, with a liability, if the if the road decay or infrastructure decay hurts or kills somebody, that would that would that could easily bankrupt our, bankrupt our community as well. And I think this and it is unfortunate that we're in a situation where we have we are being forced by state law in this case to put to to try to pick one benefit or another. And in this case, I think it's really something that I have nothing at all against the people who work for this town because they do a good job. Um, and I might make that very clear. Um, but this is something where we are actually taking a look at something that's going to ben benefit a relatively small group of people in our community versus something that could, that could potentially benefit the 18,000 members of our citizens. And honestly, that's, that's what we're up here to do. We have to, but we have to balance all of these issues, but we haven't been um, adequately putting the resources into the stuff that everybody needs. And I think that, that that's really what we really need to be doing. I know I've said that a couple of times, but yep. that's where I stand. I'll go to Council Adams, then Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Move the question. So, what was that? He made a motion to move motion the question. question. Is there a second? Move the question that's cutting off debate that's an illegal. Mr. Mr. <coughs> Smick, I am the chairman. Yeah, okay, I will rule. explain it. Thank you. Rule. Okay. I believe that is improper at this time because there is councils that wish to be recognized that have not been recognized, such as Council Daniel. Okay, my apologies. All right. Thank you. Mr. Smick has a right to speak. We're not going to recycle comments. <coughs> Council Stevenson made his comment a couple times. Council Man has asked to be recognized again. So, Mr. Smick. I'm recognized right now. Yeah. Thank you. Dave Smick, 145 Ridge Road. It's called Unfunded Liabilities. That's right. It's a way of life in this country for every community in this country. 
We spend and we appropriate the money that has to be paid annually through our budget. No problem there. We pay what we're supposed to pay. Now, in financial good years, like in the past, we had Casella, and we got royalties from them. Very good idea to pay money towards some of those unfunded liabilities. It's a good idea. We don't have Casella anymore. Uh, there were things that have been established that we need in this town that we could not afford. And I know some of you like to claim you, you, you did a lot towards uh, road repavement. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to disagree with you. There are a lot of things that we need in this town that we can't afford and we haven't done. Hasn't been funded. Now all of a sudden we're going to take $150,000 that's been sitting in these different accounts and put some money towards the unfunded liability. But the things that have to be done, we can't afford to do, but this we can afford to do. Doesn't make sense. You're upside down with your priorities. I don't mean uh, to pick on council, but you people got to get a handle on what the hell is going on here. Everything, look at the last few budgets. We're buying cars, trucks, this, that, hiring people. Can't put a square foot of pavement down. And you put $100,000 down. And can't afford to even do anything then. Does it make sense? I recommend no. Let the money sit where it is. If you're going to appropriate it, appropriate it towards uh, road reconstruction or, or repavement. <clears throat> but if you're not going to do that, let it sit where it is until you guys can make a better judgment on what you're going to do with it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mc. I just a uh, point of uh, information. Um, the Solar money has not just been sitting there. Solar, uh, this solar program just took place. Those are revenues that were, were anticipated to come forward. And the town manager has, even before I got here, has stated to councils that the, the intent was to use some of that money for OPEP. So that money has not been sitting there. There is no solar money that has been sitting there. So I just want, there is no solar money that has been sitting there. Okay, the Casella money, I am full agreement with the town manager right now. Um, we've had this conversation about do we put a little bit, and I understand the conversations about um, OPED, unfunded mandate, and the state put something on us. And listen, we got more things coming down the road. We want to sit here and talk about not getting trucks, not getting this. When we have to do stormwater management mitigation, wait till that hits the books because that's going to cost this town and the taxpayer a lot of money. So this council does work very hard, as has other councilors throughout the years, to balance everything. We can all sit here and say, oh, don't buy a truck this year, don't buy a cruiser, but when we don't have the fire truck to respond to a fire that may take somebody's life, then what's going to be said? Because we had antiquated equipment. And then when we don't have the plow truck to plow the roads, it's going to be, why didn't you buy new trucks to plow the roads? It's a, and you have sat here, Mr. Smick, as a counselor, and you know that it is, you have to make decisions to balance all the needs of the town. So we can all sit here and say, let's take our excess capacity that we'll see on the cap recap of 692000 for next year, and let's just spend it all on roads. And then the taxpayer will sit here and go, why did my tax rate go to $25 a thousand? And then when we're at $25 per thousand, we ain't going anywhere else because now we're at the two and a half cap. So it is a balancing act to make sure that all the needs of the community are put forward. And we try to make the best decisions that we can with the, dis the information that we have. With that, Councilor Daniel, because you have not spoken yet. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, I am concerned about the bond rating for the town. We've got, a, as Councilor Jovan just alluded to, we've got a lot of future expenses that are coming down in the next year or two, and the bond rating is going to be critical to us. Um, 
as counsel, former Councillor Clements said, we can't keep kicking the can down the road. I do believe that we have to face what's coming down at us now, and therefore I will be supporting this. Thank you. Council Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. I, I don't deny that we need to pay this. I'm just saying, is there any way through you, Mr. Chair, to the town manager that we can look at the three to $4 million that's sitting in the um, landfill royalty to see if we can take $150,000 out to put towards the, um, the OPEP, the unfunded, the Mr. retirement. Mr. Town Manager. Uh, uh, thank you, and it's a very good comment. If you note the actual uh, motion before you, $79,000 is coming from that landfill royalty account oh, that yes. you're speaking about. Oh, yes. There you go. <laughs> so so you're, if that's already part of this motion. The additional 71000 is coming from the lease agreement for the solar things for three quarters of right. the year that the leases came in. So this actually fulfills, I think, what you're asking for uh, the motion the way it's written. Well, um, so through you, Mr. Chair, um, I'm actually asking for the entire $150,000 to come out of that instead of, so my mistake. I did see that $79,000 okay. there too. So to you, Mr. Chairman, just to be clear, the, the additional money is for the um, solar projects. And as the chairman okay. stated correctly, uh, I've been talking about with this board for the last couple of years, the importance of utilizing that solar money for this purpose. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll say it to you right now, next year we'll be looking to get the, 250, the full 250000 from solar revenues because you'll have the full year of lease payments, plus you'll have the new taxes that are created as part of that. So that is estimated to be between $250,000, $300,000 in new income to the town. That was why I structured and have talked to councilors about putting in those money in for this and not to spend it for other things so that it wouldn't cost us in terms of new taxes or, or new increases. It would be utilizing the solar money, which is revenue that's going to be given to us over 20 years directly to pay down the solar liability, the unfunded uh, OPEB liability. So to me, it's a perfect way to do it without raising taxes to people. It just takes new money we're getting in for the solar, applies it to OPEB, and keeps uh, the tax rate from going up. Thank you, um, Mr. Town Manager. I, I understand that. Um, so how much money is in the solar fund? Three, three, Mr. Chairman, the amount of money you'd be transferring, that's what's in no. it, because that's the three quarters payments. So we're only, because of the way it started, it's only three quarters of the year in lease payments. So that's the money that you're talking about in this amendment. So it's all of it. And the balance of it will be used from that royalty account. So it's $71,000 per quarter? No, that's for the three quarters. For three quarters. Three quarters. 71000 for that's three quarters. That's for just the lease payments, not taxes generated. Okay, so that's all the money that's in that account right now? Correct. What's the anticipation for the future revenue for next year? So, so through you, Mr. Chairman, that's three quarters uh, is the 71000 so I expect another third of that would be added next year, so around $100,000 in lease revenue next year, and about $200,000 in new taxation that we'll get on the books next year. That's where I came to the approximately $300,000 number. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll be taking the new taxation, th that money, and we'll be applying that towards OPEB uh, along with the... That is and has been the plan for the last okay. couple of years. Thank you. And, and as a follow-up to that, Council Mayor, it, I mean, that would be something what we could talk about during the budget process about if we just want to be conservative and, and plug the $100,000 per year into OPEB to have a good faith effort for solar and then look at the other revenues for taxation for other projects if we have to, but that's a discussion the council could have at that time. So, I, you know, that, to do no disrespect to the manager, but that's the conversation that we have. And when we talk about planning as a council, we've talked about all the sources of revenue and how do you fund these things with new sources of revenue. So we talk about, and we have talked about solar to take care of OPED, and then we have a medical marijuana facility coming in and money's coming to that. Do we use some of that money through the, maybe contacts through, the, through discussions at at budget time, do we use some of that money uh, as a revenue source to public safety? And then do you take the adult use marijuana revenues that you have coming in and, and target that for some capital projects? That's, that's the planning that we have in place to be able to address a multitude of issues. So I mean, that's why there is a plan. And, and it's, it's um, I'm reluctant, like the manager is, to, to take anything out, excessive monies out of that. I know originally you talked about 250 out of mm -hmm. landfill royalties for this year um, to fund OPEB. 
but not knowing what that potential liability could be to us, we have to be conservative at this point to make sure that we don't overextend and be a position that we're not able to, ho hopefully we have no liability, but we have to make sure that we have something to protect the town um, until that is resolved. I understand everything that you're telling me, and I understood it. Um, I'm just like, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Is there anything further? Okay. Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Vote to approve transfer of $100 from the assessor's data, assessor's data processing account number 001141-530200 to the assessor's dues and subscri subscriptions account number 001141-573000. Is there a motion? So, so second. second. Discussion? Council states? Uh, this was on the last Jenga meeting too, and um, this was approved unanimously. Thank you. Anything <coughs> further? All those in favor? Opposed, unanimous well present. Item 15, vote to ratify the agreement with Global Data Systems Incorporated, GDS, for engineering services in the amount of $17,711.22 for Microsoft Server 2008 R2 upgrades, PC deployment, and Microsoft Exchange online migration. Is there a motion? So moved. So, so, second. Council Steves? Um, yeah, we approve this one unanimously too. Any further discussion on this? Council Marchetti? Uh, did Will want to come up and talk about any of these? Or? What? No. Uh, if you have a question, do you, yeah. do you want to just give a brief overview of what the next two are then, Will? Just for the public, I guess that's a good idea for yeah. the public of why we're, right. what we're doing with that. So I think the question that was asked, would Will like to come up and explain it? The answer is no, he will. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this item here is uh, currently Microsoft is having an end of life for some of their server versions, server 2008, of which we have several. Um, we have to upgrade to server 2016, and this is the engineering work for the migration uh, of those servers in the new domain controllers, getting them all engineered. In addition, uh, Microsoft is discontinuing uh, support of all of their Windows 2007 computers. So we've been planning this. I have 20, computer, 20 PCs. This is also for the uh, implementation and installation, adding them all to a domain of those. And the third thing is uh, we currently operate, I think it is uh, Microsoft Exchange 2010, and we're going to be moving, for email purposes, we're going to be moving the Microsoft Exchange to Microsoft Online, and this is for the engineering uh, and mo uh, migrating all of, the, all of our existing uh, uh, email accounts to server on, excuse me, Exchange Online. So that's this, this entire item, the $17,711. Any further discussion? Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? You know, so present. I'm 16, vote to ratify the agreement with Global Data Systems GDS for managed IT services in the amount of $49,783.20 in the first year, $54,625.20 in the second year, 57, 8, 53, 20 in the third year. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Well, you want to just? Sure. Um, so currently all of our infrastructure is managed by a company, myself and a company, uh, Global Data Systems. Um, they're on the state bid list. And so they monitor and uh, work, uh, monitor and maintain our existing servers, our existing virtual servers, firewalls, um, switches, uh, SAN, which is a, uh, our uh, uh, data that manages all of our data here at the town hall, at the DPW, at the water filtration plant, and so forth. Um, the cost currently is ex just about that 49000 uh, in year one. I can't even see the number. 49783 It's plus or minus $100 of that. So we've been under contract with them for a number of years. This is renewing the contract. We have a lot of new equipment that's coming in in addition to some software that they have to handle for us and procure for us, which is included in that. Um, and that's simply to maintain the maintenance agreement and the monitoring for us. 
Uh, the years two and three will go up slightly because they should have gone up for all three years, but I told them this is our budget, which we had planned in last year's operating budget. So they're discounting year one and year two, and over three years it's going back to the, uh, what's the word? Not the standard cost, but the, co the actual cost for all of these licenses and so forth. Further discussion? Councilor Marchetti? As I said at the subcommittee level, I, I mean, I, I know that this is a lot of money, but I just want residents to realize, you know, when you have hackers out of Eastern Euro Europe and Russia holding towns hostage to their software, you, you have to bite the bullet and vote for these things. So, thank you. Thank you. Anything further? All those in favor? Opposed? Yes, yeah, fall present. Thank you. Thank you, Will. See you Thursday. Vote to approve the contract snow plow and snow removal contractors for the 2019-2020 season for snow plowing and snow removal. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Is there none? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain. Council Adams abstains. Vote to approve, item 18, vote to approve the updated alternate side parking and snow emergency routes winter parking ban for 2019-2020 to reflect the addition of Morris Street. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Council Staves. Just a quick question. Uh, since I was doing GenGov at the time, I wasn't able to attend DPW. So I was just curious why, why we needed to add Morris Street to this list. It was just missed when they did put out the list the last time. Okay. It was supposed to be on the list, but it was missed when they okay. updated the list. So okay. it's just a correction to that list. Okay. Correct, Heather? Am I good? Correct. All right. That's correct. All right. And it was uh, passed unanimously. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous well present. Item 19, vote to approve the purchase of a snowplow from Place Motors for DPW Truck 24 in the amount of $6,765, including an installation and rubber deflector to be paid from account number 001499-518000, motor vehicle parts and accessory. This is an existing truck move from the water department last year, which did not have a plow. Is there a motion? So moved. Jack, the number is wrong. Okay, what was the, the number? The account number should be okay. 54. Should be 0014995480. Okay. Would well, you ask for consent to change that for 54? Are we good on that? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, was there a motion? Yes. There was one. Second. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. This was passed unanimously at uh, the um, DPW subcommittee meeting. Um, Anything further, Council Steve? I'm um, just a good question. How many how many plows will this actually? How many active oh. plows will this give us? Do you know? <laughs> I didn't count today. <laughs> this this uh, I can tell you that last year there were multiple times when we would have a plow breakdown and we'd actually have to send either our temp one of our temporary guys home. Um, so because we literally wouldn't have a small plow truck to put them in. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the age of our equipment. When you're yeah. out there plowing, things break. So this is hopefully going to give us that one, you know, spare, mm -hmm. so that when breaks, we can just put another one out on the street. Um, in addition, we are hoping this year that we might actually get three temporary snow plow drivers. Mm -hmm. um, we're still trying to get in contact with a guy who did put in his application. So in that case, we'd probably have the truck filled. So. And this is for the small pickup trucks, yeah. not the big ones. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous vote present. Item 20, vote to ratify the contract with VHB in the amount of $5,220 to be paid from the Roadway Improvement Fund for the Bridge Condition Assessment and Re Recommendation Report for the Mill Street Bridge over the Quinnebog River. Is there a motion? So, so Second. Okay. This was uh, discussed at DPW subcommittee passed unanimously to the full committee. This is uh, the, there was a question, what was the road improvement fund? That is the $100,000 that we um, added to the budget in the, uh, within the budget for road improvements. So that's the roadway improvement uh, plan. Council Manna. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you to um, Ms. Blakely. Have you heard anything from the state about a grant? I have not. I did hear from MassDOT today saying that Senator Fatman's office had been asking. I can't. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I did hear from MassDOT today asking that Senator Fatman had been asking about the status of the bridge. So obviously there are conversations happening because they reached out to me to find out more information. So 
I would say that there's still conversations happening at the legislative le level going back down to Mass DOT, but we haven't heard anything further. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And this would be for the assessment of that period so that they could then go to the engineering phase. Mm -hmm. So thank you for reaching out on that as well and following up Council Manor with uh, Senator Representative as well. Council Steve? Um, just a quick question. Do you have some idea of how long this assessment is likely to take? I would say within one to two months we'll know you'll have a report in hand which will just give us a basic general understanding of what needs to be done. Right. Um, not the design plans to do it, just what needs to be done and what our projected costs are, which will give us more leverage to go back, whether it's to the state or look for a grant application or anything. Um, it's to give us an idea of what the scope, broad scope of this project is going to be. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous all present. Item 21, vote to ratify a negative change order number one for a negative $6,650 with RH White Construction for the Bio Tower Sludge Return Bypass Project at the Wastewater Treatment Plant. So move. Second. This was discussed at DBW with a recommendation to approve. Any discussion, questions for Heather on that? It's money coming off the project, so that's yeah, always that's a good always thing. That's always a good thing. So. <laughs> that's always good. Any, so no discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? And all present. Item 22, vote to ratify amendment number 16 for a total cost of $120,489.50 with Gannett Fleming to be paid from account number 3350005300 DPW facility cleanup at 185 Gulf, Gulfwood Road. 22992 is the increased cost over amendment number 15 for technical engineering services with Gannett Fleming. For modification, I'm not going to read that because the motion is just to um, do that. But um, this was discussed at DPW subcommittee. Um, is unanimous. I'd like to thank Councilor Marchetti because he gave a great dissertation and study uh, of the DPW project from 2002 to 2008, um, with how much has been sent, spent by the town so far up to that point, which was uh, approved. So thank you for giving that information. If you have any comments you want to make. Afterwards, oh, it just, uh, thank you. It, it just goes way Excuse back. Excuse me. To, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, not you. They were talking. You had the floor. That goes back to 2002 when uh, the whole thing started, and uh, something that was uh, voted to purchase for 1.3 million has turned to all to almost 9.4 million and more yeah. by now. So, it's a lot of a lot of issues down there that should have been looked at back in 2002, but weren't. So, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. But yeah. Thank you. But thank you for doing that homework because it was quite extensive. Mm -hmm. Council Manor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do apologize for the um, discussion with um, my fellow councillor. Um, I just have a question. Vote to ratify amend amendment number 16 and increase costs over amendment number 15. But there's no reference to number 16 or number 15. So I don't know. I don't know what where. Maybe amending. maybe I can under, explain maybe, a little I bit. I think it should yeah. be in the motion, though. Speak a little louder. Maybe I can explain a, a little bit. <clears throat> maybe it's not. So, and I don't have the date of when 15 was approved, but it was about six months ago. Amendment 15 came before council for additional work that needed to be done to address the EPA's comments. It was additional sampling for the report in response to their report. They started that process, and when they started that process, they found that conditions were actually a little different in the field, but also some of the testing that they assumed was done the first time that they would be able to submit the sampling results, that wasn't the case. So this is a change of scope from what was approved in 15, which increases the cost. So Amendment 15 will, be re will basically be revised to, and replaced by Amendment 16 with the cost going up to the, uh, up by that $22,000 amount. Thank you very much. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now it does. Thank you. So the cost increase is only $22,000, not $120,000. Right. Any further discussion? Council Steves? Um, yes. Yeah, so, so based on this point, how, how close are we actually from what, what you've ta you're talking of with Bennett and Fleming? is to actually giving us a plan to do something about the DPW yeah. project. So my impression, 
And I, I hesitate to say this because, as you know, I've been here for about seven years. Yeah, and and since I started, it's been, we're really close, we're really close, we're really close. Right. So I don't want to say that this, but my impression is the, we actually receive the comments back from EPA mm -hmm. and DP, and this is response to those comments. Mm -hmm. So they have submitted their plan of what they thought we should do. Mm -hmm. And these are the comments to address, these are the, they have to co submit on the comments mm -hmm. to further clarify the plan. Some of it is they wanted additional sampling to make sure that they delineated mm -hmm. everything. That's what the majority of this is. Yeah. Um, they wanted more detailed sampling on dioxins in the soil, so they need to collect more samples. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, we're close. Part of it is that there are no timetables associated with the EPA's response, so we could do this work, you know, when it's gonna take six months, maybe a year to do all this work and submit it, and they might not respond back for another two or three years. Mm -hmm. um, so it's sometimes it's, it's literally beyond our control once we submit back to them. But I can tell you they're at the stage where they're actually submitting close the, what the remediation plan should be. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have any idea what that remediation plan actually is? What are they saying we're, we're probably going to end up having to do? The proposed plan is to take that pile of soil that is sitting next to DPW right. and deposit it into the big wetland that is adjacent to the property and cap the whole thing. That is the basic mm -hmm. plan. Guys, and like pave it all over, or and have it paved all over. It has to be capped because yeah. it will be a contained. Basically, it will sit there, contained, yeah. lined, contained. All the contamination is contained in one location. Yeah. I was curious, how do they plan on lining the wetland? Oh, they have their own methods. I don't. I haven't delved into the details, but they can do it. <laughs> There's okay. contamination, there's contaminated sediments in the wetland yeah, itself, so yeah. that's part of the reasoning. They well, have I, to dig it up anyways mm -hmm. and coffer dam it and put, and remove that soil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was aware of that. I was just yeah. trying, to figure, trying to picture how you're gonna do that with a big uh, wetland. <laughs> with dams and. Uh, anything further? Okay, that's it, awesome. Awesome. thanks. Anything further? All those in favor? Opposed? You know as well, President. Item 23, vote to approve repairs to a private way request for Pearl Street per Chapter 8, Section 8-102 of the Town of Selfridge Code of Bylaws for a private road. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? This was passed unanimously by DPW subcommittee. Meets the definition of private road. Council Manor? Thank you. Um, is this the $500 limit? Correct. Okay, should that be in the motion? Um, the, the it's the bylaw states it's only $500. So we're okay, okay. Yeah. I, I used to see it, so yeah. that's why. Okay, thank you. Council I'm sorry, this may be a dumb question. Where exactly is Pearl Street? That's not a street I'm following. It's with. kind of over off a of mechanic. It's a street off of mechanic off towards the river. It's right in the oh, map. Oh, in right. Okay, I know where that is. Okay, I do know this. It's right in the documents in the map. Okay, I know where that is. Okay. Liberty, okay. is that what? Yeah. Okay, I know where that is. Anything further? Council Adams? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is this the entire street you guys are looking at redoing? Yeah, it is. Okay. Can't, That's all you, what was that? I can't hear you. Just ask if the. Uh, it was the entire street that they were working on? It's, it's just to fill potholes. Got it. Thank you. All right. Anything further? All those in favor? Opposed? Yes, yeah, all present. I have 24. Vote to ratify the extension agreement between the town of Selfridge and Viola, North American Northeast LLC for a one month period through December 31st, 2019 for the operation, maintenance, and management of the wastewater treatment plant. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. This, Council, Council Steves? Um, yeah, just a quick question. Uh, we just extended this, and we've got a con we're going to be debating the f hopefully a final contract this Thursday. So <laughs> I had asked the town manager yeah. to put this on uh, in, in regards with Heather as well, because at the point of the first time we posted this, we were not, uh, we were not certain that the contract would be ready. Mm -hmm. So this would certainly at least give us an extension in case something happens on Thursday night where we don't vote for it and ask the attorney to do something differently. Okay. So this is just a, 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 a precautionary measure okay. to make sure that we have a contract going forward. Because okay. this is our, you know, so that's why it's, it's here tonight. Okay. Anything further? No, I don't think so. I All think right. we'll just wait till Thursday for Thursday. the final okay. discussion. So. Okay. All right, so that's what it is. Okay. Precautionary, make sure that we cover ourselves. 
just in case. Okay. Good. Anything further? All right. Roll call. Councillor Adams? Yes. Councillor Catrona? Yes. Councillor Daniel? Yes. Councillor Jovan? Yes. Councillor Manna? Yes. Councillor Marchetti? Yes. Councillor Steves? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 25, vote to ratify the host agreement between the town of Selfridge and Green Meadows Farm LLC regarding the siting of an adult marijuana establishment retail in the town of Southbridge at 64 Mill Street, Assessor's Map 34, Parcel 146. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Discussion? Council Steves? Um, we, we discussed that at some length on the last GenGov meeting. Um, we did ultimately vote to approve it. Um, we made some amendments to it, which should be in your packets. Um, the, the, there were only two, two or three major issues that popped up, um, which specifically were, if I can find my original copy of it so I can see them. Um, let's see. We had a quick concern about, other, th other than having to correct a couple of the addresses that were misstated in our original version, um, we had an issue with a line under chapter, under paragraph one, which originally said in the event that the facility is not allowed to operate seven days per week, their percentage shall be 2.5%. Um, we, we voted to eliminate that line. Um, we voted to uh, alter the section under chapter, under section paragraph C, annual charitable contributions, to just end it at the sum of $35,000 to, um, to facilities, to nonprofits that are in Southbridge. And uh, there was a, a blank here with, that said at least, it, should say, it does say at least one camera under, chapter, under paragraph six in security. Um, and there was also a little bit of discussion actually, and uh, former counselor Clements brought this up, but we actually never ended up doing anything with it, which was the uh, one, two, three, the fourth whereas down. Um, I know uh, former counselor Clements had an objection to the phrasing of that, but we, we kind of never got back to that, so I don't know if anybody has an issue with that. Which one is that? I'm sorry. It's the fourth whereas down in the first page of the contract. She had a concern specifically about um, re that may impact town resources in ways unique to its business and draw upon town resources in a manner not shared by the general population. Um, and she was concerned that that might send kind of the wrong message the way it was phrased. I mean, I know it was intended in the sense that um, it was phrased so that because, because of the nature of the business, it might end up re requiring more police service or some such thing, which I don't know if that historic is going to end up proving to be true, but just because it's a marijuana business. Um, and I think, it, I think she was concerned about the fact that phrasing it that way may imply that we're doing more for them, for at them as a business than we would do for any other business, which I don't, th which I don't think is what the intention was. Yeah. I, I, if I can respond to that, I yeah. think my reading of this, and I, I may be wrong, but I, I think I understood her concept on, yeah, the, I did on that. I did too. But the fact that this, this type of business has to pay an in impact fee, I think that's why they say this is unique. Right. So because it's unique, therefore you get an impact fee on it. Yeah, so I think I that's too. why it goes mirror. Am, oh, that's correct. They're shaking their heads, yes. So I think I interpret that the correct yeah, way. That's what I so that's, too. Yes. It, it doesn't mean they're getting any more services. Right just means that's why they're paying an impact fee exactly. as opposed to anybody else right. because anybody else wouldn't have to pay that. Right. Exactly. So that's why you have that unique uh, part of that. Exactly. Council Marchetti? Um, I had to leave the meeting to go to the DPW and when I came back there was some discussion about a 3% uh, impact fee that you didn't have correct or something. Did you, did you solve that? or? Th that is what the discussion, what he just said about between the 25 and, and the 3? Oh, that's see. why it's the 3. No, but uh, there was something else. I thought you said... Uh, that no, the facility, the cultivation. Oh, cultivation. Oh. Oh. I was talking about the cultivation. Tell me. To, to you, uh, Councilor Marchetti, you, I think you're correct and there was a lot of discussion about the 3%, but that was dealing with another host agreement on the cultivation facility yes. where we were discussing how to uh, figure out the 3% of gross revenue when the company would be selling to its own retailer. But that's not on this particular oh, agreement, but on the next one Thank we'll you. be discussing in the future. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Anything further? Councilor Adams? Real quick question on the, um, I think it was under, what did you guys change up? It's the uh, 35,000 under C. Mm -hmm. What was the big difference? Because under medical, we used that same verbiage. Every, everybody was okay with that. What was the reasoning behind changing this to this? I, I think, I, I may answer that. Go ahead. Um, there's been some discussion uh, with the, was it the Supreme Court? Or oh. what, whatever, legally oh, about... Right, yeah. Um, stating specifically where you're going to put 
money for that type of event because it could be interpreted that you're a strong we're arm in them. We're taking advantage of them. We're taking advantage of okay. them. So therefore, okay. it was left as a, heard that a generic 35,000, and we had that discussion about that, and that's why um, I think the, the state is looking at it that mm -hmm. some communities may be uh, unfairly going after these companies for, for whatever it is. Okay. So that's why I, we, I've we heard left that too. Yeah, all right. right. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll just clarify that. Actually, it's the U.S. Attorney. Is yeah, looking is, has actually been subpoenaing towns across the state how to have really excessive contracts with with marijuana companies, um, and some some of them have. I mean, I, I, it was actually sparked by the corruption con, by the corruption complaints in Fall River, uh, from a couple of months ago, where he was he was he was blatantly taking money from them, from what I understand. Yeah. Um, okay. Obviously, he hasn't gone to court, so he's still innocent until proven guilty, but. Um, so, so the U.S. Attorney up for the state is looking into these issues with some of the more, some of the more excessive contracts that the towns have, and so it's so we were having some concern about making sure that essentially that this money is not coming through the town, because we because although we may be able to, to suggest some places where it could go, um, it really it cannot be in paperwork that this is not being paid to the town. Because that would be beyond the three percent cap, and that would be that would could potentially give us legal liability. Okay. Yeah. So, and it was great working with Green Meadows in, during the process because uh, they've been a great company and partner to the town. I look forward to working with them. Is there any further discussion? Take a roll call on this, please. Councilor Catrona. Yes. Councilor Daniel. Yes. Councilor Jovan. Yes. Councilor Mana. Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Okay. Congratulations. Item 26. A couple more to go here. Vote to approve the revisions to the personnel rules and regulations to administration as presented. Uh, section 4, hiring process, new employees, firefighter residency. Section 4, hiring process, new employees, benefits, insurance coverage, HIPAA. And number 7, separation of employment, retirement. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Councilor Steves? Um, that was also at the last GenGov meeting, and it was actually very short, a very short discussion. It's all pretty much pro forma stuff to make things run in line with state law. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? Councilor McKinney? Uh, just a clarification. Uh, when you say 15-mile radius, I've driven to Rhode Island. That's maybe by the, as the crow flies, that's 15 miles, but the firefighters don't fly here. That, that's how the law is. It's as the crow flies. Okay. Yeah. A, a mass general law for uh, those positions, okay. it is as the crow flies. So it's from border to border, straight line. Okay. So that, that's how, it, that's how yeah, the you know, state Rhode measures. Island, I've been to Rhode Island. So it's, long, it's more than 15 miles. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's probably a little bit so. tipped somewhere like in the <laughs> Dudley, okay. um, like I think Dudley, because my daughter actually lives on the Thompson, Connecticut. Uh, there's an airline trail there, and there's a tri-state marker yeah. right on that trail, and it's probably just. I think somebody yeah, just lives there. Little, yeah. just well, nobody lives. There. It doesn't matter if anybody lives there. Okay. It's it's so they could live on the other 17 side. miles or 18 yeah. miles, but it's from border to border, straight line. All right. So, yeah. Council Steves. Um, I was just curious. Um, when did we, as a town, accept that section of state law? Because I, I was actually talking to former councillor um, Butch McDonald, who was just hired as Oxford Fire Chief, and he mentioned specifically that that is something that the towns accept by law. So and I was just curious when we accepted so, it. So to you, I've been I here four years, it for and it was time. before I was here, so sometime previous to four years, four months is all I can Well, I know we've done it for a long time. Long I was just time, curious, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not going to... Under mass civil service, mm -hmm. that 15 mile would always have been there okay. because they were a civil service position. Okay. So therefore, a civil service um, laws would apply to the police department. And I think they married that. There was many, many years that they, well, I think whenever they bargained out residency requirement. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to look at where the residency requirement was that they bargained out of the um, fire contract. So I know it's been at least, we just renewed a contract, yeah, that contract before. So right. I'm going to say probably... Probably nine years ago, probably. Mm, okay. A while back. Just curious. Okay. Anything further? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? You know, it's all present. This is the third uh, final reading. <laughs> Vote to ratify the amendment to the Suffrage Code of Bylaws, Section 3 202, Airport Commission, to change and include one member, maybe a non resident, providing the member is actively involved in the Suffrage Municipal Airport. 
first reading was on 10-21-19, second reading on November 4th, 2019. This is the third and final reading. Is there a motion? Still moved. Second. Okay, I'm just going to read this. It's just, I'm going to read the first paragraph because that's the only change to the bylaw. Uh, 3-202 Airport Commission, 3-202.1 Establishment. There shall be an airport commission consisting of five commissioners. The members of the airport commission shall serve for a term of five years until their successors are qualified. The addition is, one member may be a non-resident, providing the mem that a member is actively involved in the Suffrage Municipal Airport. Parentheses, Chapter 389, Acts of 1946, close parentheses. Is there any further discussion on that, Mr. Manager? Just one brief comment. As you know, there's a citizen who is uh, waiting for this to pass. Mm -hmm. It will be uh, on the next, probably, council agenda to be added to this. Okay. Council Manager? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I just want to say I'm happy to see this because, um, yeah, we, we did want um, a few years back. I remember this didn't pass. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so happy to see it. And I'm happy to see that they'll have a full board. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And again, given the regional importance of that airport and the improvements that they're doing up there, I think an uh, addition to, I think the person that they, they have is a qual as an airline pilot mm -hmm. for a major carrier. So that kind of experience would only benefit the town. Right. So, and bring them back up to full commitment. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything further? Roll call, Madam Secretary. This Council requires a two-thirds approval. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Jovan? Yes. Councilor Manna? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Catrona? Councilor Catrona? Yes. Thank you, unanimous. Council's forum. Council Steves, I'll start with you tonight. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will have only one very quick mention, um, and uh, that is that uh, on Sunday I happened to swing over to the hotel, and we don't get a lot of information from them about some of the stuff that's going on over there, because I was going there uh, as a reporter in my, you know, my reporting capacity, and I was planning to take photos of something completely unrelated to what I ended up covering, which is a uh, they were they had a social and nutrition conference down there, talking about a whole bunch of of relate well, about regenerative regenerative agriculture and cleaning up the planet and getting getting communities involved in trying to make a real difference in some of the things that, that we're doing now and changing our changing the path that we're on. Um, and I just thought it was really interesting because I didn't expect it to be there. I wasn't going there for that purpose. Um, but they but the person who was organizing mentioned that, that they've been there at the hotel for the last three years. And I didn't know it existed. So I just thought I'd mention that. And uh, they just I thought it was interesting that they have some some of the stuff up there that's going on that we rarely hear about. So, and that, that's really all I had. Thank you, Council. Council Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. So tonight, um, I am wearing a t-shirt, sweater, because I'm cold. <laughs> but it's um, SPD, Southbridge, and is to support um, cancer. And the shirt has a special meaning to it. Um, it's for, to raise money for um, a probation officer, Candido D Diaz. He has been diagnosed with, um, with cancer. Now, Candido, um, he is a member of the probation department. He's also very involved in the community with the youth of our community and with our, the Southbridge Cops and Kids program. Um, the shirt is $20 and it's to support um, a good man. Um, there's a little bit more to the story though. Um, when Candido was diagnosed with cancer, his son, who's 19 years old, was also diagnosed with cancer. So the money's going to the family. There's also a, um, a GoFundMe page. Um, if anybody would like to um, take a look at it and maybe donate a little bit, it's um, the Diaz, D-I-A-Z, Family Cancer Fund, and that's organized by Melissa Jobert Totero. Um, and it's GoFundMe, and it's for the Diaz Family um, Cancer Fund. Um, like I said, Candido's been involved in this community for many years with the youth. He, um, he's a probation officer, and he, he gives back to the community as well um, through the Cops and Kids program whenever he can. Um, so I, I feel it's a very, very good cause. Um, and let's see. Um, 
Yes, there are a few T-shirts left at the police department, and if you'd like to purchase one, um, get a hold of um, Deputy Chief Jose Dingy, 764-5420, or is it 765? I can't remember. 764-5420, <laughs> um, and he has a few, um, he's about 10, and that was his second order. I, I was supposed to wear this at our first town council November meeting, um, but they had ran out, so they had ordered some more. So they're, they're running through them. So um, if you're interested, there are a few left. And like I said, they're $20 each. Um, and it's for a good cause. Um, so it's getting colder now. And we noticed like we've had a lot of rain and this drainage that's coming out and there's ice. So if you could just keep an eye on the sidewalks for your ice and try to keep it clear. Um, if you notice it's icy, maybe put some salt down and stuff. Um, and keep an eye on your neighbors. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Council Catrona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, congratulations to the Southbridge Pop Warner cheerleaders. Um, and good luck in Orlando. Uh, there was a great video we saw tonight um, by Mrs. Clemens. Just like to remind everybody the parade is November 30th. Um, the tree lighting is at 5 o'clock on the Southbridge Common. 5.30 to 7.30, pictures with Santa. Uh, the Southbridge High School Chorus will be there on the Common, as well the jazz band. So, hope to see everyone there. Thank you. Thank you. Council Thank you. Adams? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just got a couple of things. Um, Thursday, we have a special town, count, town council meeting talking about tax classification. Um, last year, I, I appreciate us setting that up. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for setting that up because last year when I was brand new to the uh, council, we basically received the presentation the day we had to vote on it. Um, even though we, we received the packages on Thursday, um, it, it was, you know, we, we, we want to give the, the public a plenty of opportunity to voice their concerns and their opinions as well. So I, I appreciate us, uh, you setting that up and that us having it. Um, I think that I'll, I've already passed that out. So that is this Thursday, I believe, at 6 o'clock in uh, the veterans' room. Another thing is um, I, I sat, down, sat down with the town treasurer, and a couple weeks ago I pulled the tax titles. Um, and uh, I pulled the tax titles. I pulled the water sewer liens within our town. Um, it's, it's staggering the amount of property owner and business owners we have in town, even though we saw this last year, um, that together between all three of them, all three of them, $2.8 million is, is not paid back to the town. $2.8 million. That is like almost 10% of our actual budget that we're pulling out of. So it's amazing that uh, property owners and business owners aren't paying the taxes. I understand there's, there's, there's bits and uh, pieces here. You know, we don't know, always know the whole, whole story and that people do go into hard times here and there. But the amount of money, $2.8 million within this town, is, is, is staggering. You could, as a citizen or as a resident of this town, you can pull those tax title and the water sewer um, list or liens from the treasurer. You can send her an email, and she has 10 business days to send that to you. I, I did sit down with the treasurer again today, and we discussed a few options. I know with the town manager, um, the inspector, um, all kinds of people are working on now to kind of... Uh, to maybe catch up uh, where we need to catch up. And I can imagine what that can do for our roads and a few other things within this town, our infrastructure, uh, if we actually had this money. Reminder, this also hurts us when it comes to tax season because now we have to come up with that to, to fix or to catch up to the budget because people did not pay. So if um, I'm gonna be taking a look at this a little bit harder, I'll talk to the town manager a little bit more, didn't mean to, to throw it on you, but I just wanna do some of my, some of my own homework on this. Um, so, um, and I also mentioned this during my Facebook Live uh, address as well. So, um, I'll take a look at this, and um, anybody can take a look at it anytime they'd like. And who is on there? Lastly, uh, Recreation Committee. Now that we got the bylaw back up on there through the Gen Gov subcommittee, um, I do believe there's uh, two individuals that are looking at the subcommittee itself. Uh, if you're interested, please get a hold of Jared. Oh, he's the new Recreation Director in town, and um, that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Manager, you want to respond to it? If I could, just because some information is now hanging out there, I just want people to understand 
uh, because it's not, uh, to be very clear, it's not from a lack of collection efforts this money is holding out there. Uh, we do foreclose on a lot of property, and some properties we don't foreclose on because the value is, is or the cost to obtain that property might be more uh, than the money is owed to that property. In other words, if you have to rip down a building on that property, it might cost you $300,000, the taxes owed might be a lot less than that, and it doesn't make sense to own that property. Uh, I do want to point out that the town council uh, recently, in a, I don't want to say if it's six months ago or so, uh, if you owe back taxes, you're not allowed to get any kind of building permit. And that, uh, prior to not too long ago, was you had to be a year behind in back taxes. Because of the work that we did with town council, now uh, it, almost, it's only, it gives you like a month and you can't get building permits. So if somebody wants to do some improvement to a house, we won't let them. They can't get a permit to do anything uh, unless they pay their taxes. We are putting a tremendous amount of pressure on people to pay those taxes but again, there's, there's a lot of reasons why it takes some time. First of all, uh, going for foreclosure could actually take a couple of years for the court system to actually foreclose on that property. And again, you, you might make a conscious decision not to foreclose on that property because it might cost you more than it's worth. I just didn't want the indication hanging out there there's a lack of effort by our treasurer collector uh, through our foreclosure process, our building inspectors. Everybody is working along with council to try to get at those people who owe those back taxes. Mr. Chair, me. Just making sure that I didn't say that there was lack of effort by any of your part. Uh, okay. If, if I know that I just didn't want it to be hanging out there, Councilor Adams. Yeah. yeah. Councilor Marchetti? Uh, just as a follow-up for that, I, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I do know there are some people in town that uh, have gotten behind on their taxes, and they just can't afford the, the interest and the penalties that are involved with it. And if there's some way that they can be forgiven, I'm not saying all of them, but some of them, if they can be forgiven on some of that, they might be able to catch up on it. As I've heard some people tell me that they've, they can't even pay the interest on the back taxes, never mind paying off the taxes. I know I've talked to the town manager about that before. Um, I would like to say to the town manager, as far as Maria Avenue goes, I want to thank you very much for getting on that. Uh, persistency pays off. The uh, machinery was removed. Um, the smiley face is fine. And uh, to uh, Maureen Doyle, who said that, uh, sent me an email and said that I remind her of the, uh, the old saying that the wheel that squeaks gets the grease. This wheel is just going to keep rolling, so thank you. Uh, I have brought up before about the handicapped uh, entrance in the back. I'm going to keep on that because I do know we set some money aside for that. I don't know what the hang up is on it. Uh, the whole handicapped entrance, the door, and the elevator all need looking at. We did set some money aside for that. I would like something moved on, and I, I know that before there was something about an oil tank. I don't know what, why that would be standing in the way. Last winter, when I was coming into the town hall, I actually saw ice fall off that roof and onto that ramp, and I really think that something needs to be done with that uh, uh, entrance. I know that the uh, the um, Disability Commission is talking about it, and uh, hopefully we can get something done on that. Um, uh, I also last week visited the airport, and I got to tell you, that's a beautiful place. Uh, I really like what they've done over there. I, given a, I was given a full tour of the place, and uh, he's, he's got an old airplane in the back that he's going to put out front and make it into like a entrance right as you come in and it's really a, a beautiful place and I think it's uh, definitely the pride of the community and I'm, I'm really glad that that's, uh, that's up there and that we saved it. And one last thing, I, I had a chance to go to the Senior Center luncheon today, it was an excellent, excellent meal and I wasn't just a visitor, I am also a, a member of the Senior Center. <laughs> Cod Carey member. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just as a um, regards to that town hall side repairs, uh, I think the um, I just happen to have the capital project fund balances that was sent to us by Karen. Uh, there is sixty four thousand three hundred and eighty dollars assigned for that, um, and what they had put in the comments just for the public, it had been put on hold until the heating system was completed. The original scope of the project was limited to replacing existing concrete on the ramp but has been extended to remove of the heat and oil tank prior to replacing that concrete. And they just finished putting in the boiler system with a gas. So, uh, but it's going to require temporary handicapped access to be addressed. 
and they have to look at options to ex for access for handicapped people to come in. Um, currently looking to get engineering and architect for project to provide plans and specs for the ramp, temporary handicap access, revised handicapped access, and removal of the oil tank. So I don't think 64,000 is probably going to be enough of it because we're going to have to hire engineering just to scope it out. But we'll see what Heather is on that. But uh, I don't, given the weather, oh, that probably is not going to be done until spring anyway. So it's my take on it. Right. Council Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, those of you in the public may recall that I've mentioned in the past that Southridge sits on a three-legged stool, uh, the three legs being the schools, the infrastructure, and public services. It takes quite a balancing act to maintain level legs for the town to sit on. Uh, this council, I believe, has given a lot of due diligence to the expenses that we've um, authorized. There's a lot of discussion in the subcommittee meetings, sometimes heated discussion, uh, but uh, genuine and concerned discussion, and uh, all nine councils have not been afraid to chirp in, frankly, and make their positions known and their feelings known, and uh, sometimes compromises uh, brought to the forefront. I want to assure the public that we really do uh, take these issues to heart. We take them seriously. And, um, you know, it is a balancing act. It's three legs on that stool. And everyone is demanding a piece of the treasurer, the treasurer. Everyone is uh, demanding a piece of the attention. And there's only so much that can go around at a given time. So I ask the public's indulgence. I ask the public's patience. And I ask the public's understanding that uh, your council hears you. We're aware of what your concerns are. We ask that you keep addressing your concerns to us. Uh, don't let us slide by. Make sure that we're listening to what you're saying and that we take you into account. And again, I ask your indulgence. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Council, before you go, I, I just, if it could, just want to address one thing. I, nobody had mentioned it earlier tonight. I just want to thank the Selfridge Police Department for their actions this morning in a uh, uh, event that took place. And just want to assure the residents of Southbridge that at no time there's been conflicting uh, comments out there, but at no time it, it had something to do with schools and a, a possible threat. Uh, however, there was nothing that indicated that it was a Southbridge school. There was no mention that it was a Southbridge school. There was no mention that it was a Southbridge resident and went into a crisis hotline. The only thing that they had was a prefix of 774 that is used for the Southbridge area, but um, the police chief did not believe it was a credible threat. Again, Southbridge was not mentioned at all. The police chief did due diligence to protect the students of the town, but I want to show the residents out there that there was nothing further or any credible um, threat to Southbridge because the town was never ever mentioned, but I applaud the police department for being proactive and protecting the students in the community. Council Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The next regularly scheduled meeting for the Town Council is Monday, December 2nd, 2019 at 7 p.m. in Council Chambers. So until then, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thanksgiving. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Have a good evening and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. That's right.